All right, I'm going to give you an example of how to interact with the REST API via the curl command. Curl is a simple command line program for making HTTP requests. It's probably the most minimal way of doing that. It's really nice because it's available everywhere. It's free. You can use it on Linux, Mac, um, probably Windows, definitely through the WSL layer and Ubuntu. So it, it's a very nice sort of bare bones way of making, uh, interacting with the REST API. Um, it, it'll, it also, you can incorporate it into say like bash scripts or something else like that. Um, it's, it's very nice. It, so I'm just gonna dive into this. I'm gonna continue with my example of my to-do list. Um, this is also just kind of an example of how to interpret the sort of convention for describing a, a REST API through documentation. Um, uh, so for, for this first line, we have, it, it starts off with the HTTP method, so get. Um, the domain is omitted. Usually it's just kind of known or implied, it's pretty obvious. So uh, so if you're like working with the Twitter API, for example, you know what the domain is gonna be, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so for my to-do list, uh, it's gonna start off with this static string API, followed by uh, a, sort of a user, it's really sort of a user's to-do list resource. So, um, the the list only takes two operations get is going to um, return all the items the user has so their full to-do list post is going to append to it um, <clears throat> so again this colon means what follows is basically a variable you're going to place with a particular user's uh, id or in this case i just use their name um, also i'm going to note here that it, as a parameter, you're supposed to send a JSON object with a field called text, and it's gonna be whatever text you want. Um, so there's, the, the next part of my list, or rather my, my application here is, there's a particular to-do item. So it supports get, put, and delete. Um, this get means we'll return a particular to-do item so you know Joe blows item uh, you know with ID 5 or something like that put is going to update the uh, to-do item the only thing we're going to update it with is whether the items completed or not so it has that field as well by default they're all going to be uncompleted to start with and they'll be able to mark them as completed and then finally the last operation we can do to a to-do list item is delete it so let me run you through what I have here with curl. I've written out, the, maybe the downside of curl is it's sort of lengthy if you write it all out, particularly if you're using JSON. So you're gonna start with um, curl command, literally curl. Um, the first option, h, is a way of specifying any header field you want. In that case, because I'm sending in JSON, I need to specify a header field saying the content type so what the body of the request is sending so remember HTTP request there's a header which has a bunch of metadata and a body which is t typically just the data being sent this header field says oh by the way interpret the body as JSON the next piece X um, selects the HTTP method so I'm going to select post that means I'm running this command to create a new item for Adam um, oh I jumped ahead of myself slightly so Adam's the particular user I'm running this server locally so you can see the full URL here you can see how this corresponds to this bit up here I've just replaced colon user with a particular user's name Adam um, now dash D says let's specify the data or really the body of the request that's this string here which is JSON so it's it's an object you can tell by the curly brace it has one field called text that corresponds to this piece up here and I'm going to say my thing to do is to start a to-do list um, that's kind of meta I couldn't think of anything better but here we go so I fired it off <coughs> um, it returns to me an empty JSON object, that's just how I chose to implement this. 
Sometimes you don't even get that back. You might just get nothing and that's the status is set. Um, I chose to return this. Now I can run the command. So let me run uh, a get to see all the uh, to-do list items uh, that Adam has. So let me pop this up. I'll get rid of this. And I'll change this to get. I could technically drop the header too because I'm not sending any data in. So, but I'm just going to leave that there because <clears throat> I don't want to make a typo and have the whole thing uh, break. So I'm going to make a get request to this URL. Now we're going to receive JSON back. So I'm, in this case, I'm, it returns to me a list. It has a single item in it, an object. It has an ID of 14, a created date with a timestamp of when I created the item, that text I sent in, and this completed field, which is marked the false. Oh, that's cool. Um, so let's make another item and call uh, think of a different example. Hey, that's good. I'm just going to use examples from now on. They're me <laughs> coming up with <laughs> like meta examples, examples of trying to come up with examples. I think that's a pretty good uh, generator of uh, <laughs> new ideas. So I'm going to run this again. So I run the get request again. Wow, look at this. Now I have yet another one. Great. So now I'm going to <clears throat> run um, an update. So let's say I thought of a different example because I just thought of my uh, my example meta. So I'm going to change this. Um, now I'm going to be using this this entry here, right? So I'm changing the header type to put the match. That means oh put. Remember get corresponds to read, post corresponds to create, put corresponds to delete. Or the update, excuse me, and, and delete corresponds to delete. I was looking ahead of myself. I can't. I have to be totally focused. Anyways, um, so I don't need. Uh, uh, or let me see. I want to update number fifteen. So I'm going to add that into the URL <clears throat> because that's what this endpoint specifies. Under API, you pick a user. You give the ID of the item to the updated is fifteen. Um, the other thing is I have to send in a field with completed and I can set it to either true or false. Uh, so I'll get rid of this. Specify true. Run it. Okay, send me back that. Now I'm going to just get everything. Hey, what do you know? <clears throat> completed is set to true. It was false before. What do you know? So I made the put request, sent in how I wanted the field to be specified. It can only do true or false, and it got updated. That's fantastic. Uh, let me also show, um, hold on. So one useful um, command is clear. I'm going to cat. So I'll display the endpoint again, and then Okay, these are the fields that are there. Now, I will, <clears throat> um, what's the next thing? Oh, I want to show you get. So I can get just item 15. So that's what this would be. So I'm going to say read at, you know, a user's particular to-do. Use that to-do item resource. So I'm going to just put 15 on the end. Run that. Sweet, it turns <laughs> returns just an op that particular object. It's not in the list, just that object. All the data is there. Finally, I'm just going to finish this example by doing um, this delete. So all I need to do is change the header field here to delete. I can run it. Uh, then I'm going to use this endpoint up here just to get everything Adam has. That's unfortunate. If I, that's So that's actually good I did that. Um, that sometimes if if you're making a REST API request and some, you're getting back weird errors or something like that saying oh you can't find it. Sometimes having this slash or not having that slash will make a difference depending upon how it's implemented. 
I'm using Flask as my back end. Um, <clears throat> I think it's kind of picky about having not there. So I took off that slash. Now it works. I can see everything Adam has is deleted. So that's using curl to interact with the REST API.